Hey YouTube, um, this is the first video for my 40 gallon SPS uh, reef tank uh, journal. Um, so this is a 40 gallon, 36 inch wide tank with a uh, drilled overflow. Um, I got this from Concept Aquariums. Um, they did a whole, they did tank and sump for only about 240 bucks Canadian. So I was like, I'm going to snag that and set something up. Um, a uh, bit of a background, I have, I've kept reef before, I've been out of the hobby for about 10 years. Uh, some things have changed, some things haven't. Um, what's really nice is there's a lot more research now. Um, so some of the things that uh, from 10 years ago that we thought were correct have been proven incorrect, but uh, some of the things have been proven true. Um, so I'm, uh, let's see, so I'm rocking the fil filter socks, I'm not using a uh, auto roller. Um, one of the big reasons why is they just have no moving parts. Um, I want this to be dependable. Uh, so filter socks down there. Um, I've got a little protein skimmer, a Bubble Magus Curve 5. Uh, they had on clearance. It was about 130 bucks Canadian. Um, really, really low price. Then I have a DC return pump, a coral box, uh, DCA 3000. And then I also have... Um, they, because they're clearing out a bunch of stuff, I have a backup return pump. Um, it's a Jabao, which is the same company as, um, uh, it's the same company as Coral Box, also another 24 volt DC pump, one inch connection, just like the other one. So what this means is that if my return pump were to fail, I'll immediately have a backup because from experience, um, everything gets shut down if your sump stops working. So I recommend to you, if you have a sump for your aquarium, definitely do get a backup return pump, really important. Uh, I'm gonna get some use out of it anyways, so it's not just gonna be sitting around, I'm gonna be using it as my salt mixing pump. I have uh, some, uh, I've got the plumbing, plumbing pieces that I'm gonna be setting it up as a salt mixing sump, but uh, in the event that if that pump were to fail, I have that guy that I can slap on and I'll be able to limp along until I get a replacement new model. Um, so a little bit about the aquarium. I'm planning on keeping some SPS uh, corals in here. I have for lighting, which is really important, I have some uh, LEDs on the way from AliExpress. I'm gonna be doing a mix of um, cool white, royal blue, and 420 nanometer, um, 420 nanometer spectrum UV lights. Uh, haven't quite decided which drivers I'm going to go with, but I'll be sourcing the drivers locally in Canada um, because I just want to get some name brand drivers. Uh, I don't want to deal with drivers failing from China. Um, and then, oh, really cool thing is I got these massive heat sinks. Look at these things. I think I got these for less than the price of scrap. Uh, these are about, I got these for 10 bucks a piece. They're about, uh, that's over a foot wide. That's like 16 inches long. Um, I'm gonna be mounting, uh, it's gonna be a series of 10 watt LEDs along the front and back of each. And then a big 50 watt cob, um, with, which has a combination of Cree. Uh, it's gonna have, what is it? Nine Cree cool white and three Cree royal blue on a 50, it's all together on a 50 watt cob. Um, there's gonna be one cob here, one cob there, and then on the heat sinks, I'm gonna have an, um, an alternation of royal blue, and um, uh, it's gonna work out to four royal blue 10 watts and four UV 10 watts on each fixture. I have a 3D printer, so I'm gonna be building enclosures for them as well so that they don't end up with moisture coming in contact with things. So I'll be designing, uh, designing and 3D printing a uh, PETG plastic enclosure for the lights. Um, and then I'll be designing a mounting system for as well. They're definitely gonna be dimmed because it's a lot of lighting to put over this tank. Um, but I think with the 10 watt LEDs on those big heat sinks running across the heat sinks, it's gonna be almost like fluorescent bulbs that don't burn out. Um, so it'll be kind of like having like a Old, it'll be kind of like having a metal halide fluorescent hybrid from like old school, but it's going to be done with LEDs. So big fat cob light over each section, 50 watts of output from each, and then about another 80 watts 
potentially, but it's going to be dimmed down, um, of royal blue and uh, um, ultraviolet running across the tank, giving nice even, uh, even light for the fluorescing. And, um, so the light's coming in. I'm going to be focusing mostly on royal blue and um, the UV because I did a lot of research in chlorophyll A and B in saltwater aquariums. So one important thing with um, lights in aquariums is that the coral, um, the zooxanthellae and coral have adapted to the um, blue light deep in the ocean. So the ocean ends up filtering out red light. So this is like, to fish, this is really, really red. Um, any, any fish that are around like the 10, 15 meter point of water. Um, so it's going to be primarily blue and ultraviolet, which if you were to see like a spectral graph um, running of like what gets absorbed by coral, it's like heavy, heavy on like the blue and ultraviolet. And then they'll use like a little bit of red. Um, so I'll be giving a little bit of red with the cool white, but not a whole lot with a lot of, um, a lot of blue. Um, I think it's going to end up looking like an old school 20K metal halide bulb when I'm done. Um, so yeah, that's on the go. Um, I've got the, the two pumps are in a, it's an old tunes. Do, 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 do. That is a 7096 aquarium controller. It's an old model from like, I think they were coming out around 2005. When I plugged into the computer, I could kind of tell with the technology they're using that it's an old design. Um, I have some experience with like embedded computing. And a lot of people report having problems with, the, with these 7096 controllers on the forums. They plug them in and then it doesn't get detected. And that's because they'll like fail partway through their, um, like you'll download the new software. And then when you first time running the software, it'll try flashing the unit to upgrade it. And that failed for me. And I think that happens for a lot of people, but they don't understand what's going on. So I had to use some uh, AVR programming software to, um, retry putting in the firmware um, in the future if I have time I'll upload a video about that because it looks like there are a lot of people who are throwing these controllers in the garbage um, because they can't seem to get them working but uh, I'm gonna try to get a video when I have time on how to get these guys working if they fail a flash so when you plug them in and it says device not found um, I figured out how to get past that um, uh, quick explanation so a quick explanation for the 7096 if you're having a problem flashing it um, open up the on Windows open up the folder where it gets installed in and you'll find this like AVR or something something exe this um, uh, I don't think it's AVR dude I think it's something else I can't remember but uh, when it fails to flash it drops a PCY or PNY file in the installation folder which is what it was trying to flash into the unit. Open up your AVR software in the installation folder. And then you had, I had to pick, um, you click the dot, dot, dot next to the firmware. And then you browse the folder because the default folder isn't where it gets installed. So you browse to the installation folder, pick that PCY or PNY file. You'll have to pick a drop down for file type because it defaults to some other file format, but you pick like the PCY or PNY Pick the file that's in your installation directory and then click flash. It'll flash it up. And then uh, when you start your Tune software, uh, the Tune 7096 software, which you can download from their web website, it runs. Um, oh, one other thing with the Tune 7096 on, so I was running on Windows 10. You have to go into your device manager, find the COM port. So it ends up running a COM emulator over USB open the settings and you have to turn on the feature X on X off. Um, don't play around with the baud rate. Um, just turn on X on X off. And then when you, sp and then when you start the tune software, you have to choose run as administrator. Um, so, so this is just a quick overview of how I got the tune 7096 operating. Um, I can share a video. If I, if I have time, I'll try to share a video where I'm like actually screen recording on the computer and show how I got this thing going. Um, so yeah, this is the build. Um, the pumps are alternating. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so you can like go all the way down to like 0.4 seconds alternation between the pumps. And so when I had this guy filled last night up to about here, just below the overflow, 
I was playing around with the different settings and you got to be really careful running pumps as strong as this in a small tank like this because it took almost no effort to build waves that were like this big. Um, and I'd recommend not running them on random because, I don't know, there's just, with random, sometimes the waves would get going and just there is a chance that it could give, give it enough time. Like, let's say you're running over the course of like a year. There's a chance if you're running these, on, these uh, 6055 pumps with a controller on random, um, there is a chance that it will end up randomly picking what it needs for, let's say, 10, 15 seconds, because it took almost no time. It took about 15 seconds for it to start getting waves about this big, and you don't want your water spilling over the side of the tank. Don't run these things on random on a small tank this size, um, especially not at like 100% power, because you will end up with water all over your freaking floor and you'll damage your house, which is not desirable. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, that's it for now. Um, yeah, 40 gallons, uh, lights are on the way. Uh, I'm probably gonna be throwing in some dead rock. Uh, I'm looking around on the local Kijiji, it's kind of like um, Craigslist in Canada, for cheap, cheap uh, rock. I'm gonna throw it in bleach, clear it all out dump the rock in here, cycle out, um, the lights operating, and then I'll be dumping coral. Uh, yeah, so uh, stay tuned. I'll be, every once in a while, when I have something worth showing, I'm going to record more videos and throw them up on YouTube. Thanks for watching. See ya.